Hey guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. Okay, so today, Cherry tagged me in the video behind the booktube or behind the booktuber tag. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to just answer the questions. Um, I watched her video. It's super cute. I'm going to tag it below, or I'm going to link it below, and if you guys want to go do this tag, go do it. It's a really fun um, booktube tag explaining a lot of like the process of the booktuber and things like that. So I think it just lets you get to really know the booktuber and like what they're doing and how they do it and all that kind of stuff. And especially for like new booktubers, um, I think it'll explain a little bit more for you like, you know, camera setup and editing and like all those questions you might have that like might scare you from starting your own booktube channel. So let's just get right into this right away and I'll just start answering the questions, okay? So the first question is, what kind of camera do you use? Well, you guys, I know that there's like a lot of different kind of cameras that you can use out there, you know, for making videos and some of these like YouTubers use, um, you know, three, four thousand dollar cameras and other ones use just like their phone and there's so many different things you can use. Now, I prefer, you guys, um, this uh, Kodak camera. You can throw it away after you get it developed. I just get this at CVS. Um, I think it holds like 36 or 24 pictures into it. And then I go and I have them develop. But I'll talk about my editing later. But um, I wasn't so sure about this camera at first when I got it. I was like, you know, I don't know that this has the capability and the microphone usage and things that I wanted to have. But it's like totally perfect, you guys. I can just like sit there all day long and talk to it. And it just... It has everything that I want to have in a camera for my YouTube experience. So yeah, so it's the uh, Kodak. Oh, it even has this little button right here that you can push to zoom in. See, do you hear that? So you can zoom in if you want. It's You guys, it's perfect. So it's the Kodak Zoom one-time use camera. I love it. I, I mean, I swear by it. So that's the camera that I use. Okay, the next question is, I have to open my phone again. Do you use any additional equipment? For example, lighting, tripod, microphone, remote, etc. Well, really the only thing that I use is like, um, I love a, good, a, a, love a good microphone because when you listen to a lot of these videos and you can hear like sound bites of stuff that's happening and other, I, I hate like when you listen to a video and you can hear somebody's dog running across the floor or it's like echoing in a room. I hate that. So I think that a good microphone is really, really important. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a real microphone. I prefer hairbrushes, um, and these are the two hairbrushes that I typically use. You guys can't probably see it because I usually hold it down low like this, um, almost kind of like if you're on a stage and it's suspended. Um, I, I've actually thought really about having it suspended from the string, like from the ceiling, you know, and like maybe held it like up like this and then down. So you guys still wouldn't see it, but you would know. Because I feel like if I'm talking into a microphone, like it's a little bit more professional, see? Like instead of a welcome to Peter's books, I would say like welcome to Peter's books. So for me, it just gives me a more professional feel if I use a microphone. I think it gives my videos a more professional feel. So that's why I use um, a microphone. This is typically the one that I use, not this one. This one's skinny and, you know, it doesn't hold a curl to save its life. But this one I think is a little bit better. Some hairs on it. Uh, just because you can hold it down. It even actually looks like a microphone, you know? I mean, like, uh. So anyway, I think this one's perfect. I really like this one. Um, do you guys use microphones? Which microphone do you, which, I mean, really, which one would you prefer? If, if there's one that you like better than the other, let me know. I mean, you don't see it in the video, and I, get, I bet you guys didn't even know until now that I always hold one of these. So, okay, the next question is, scripted or spontaneous? How do you plan what you're going to say in your video? You guys, I know this is going to come to a, as a surprise to most people that are watching this video, um, because it comes across very naturally, I think, that I just, like, talk, and I don't really think about what I'm saying and all that kind of stuff. But I actually kind of do script out my videos. Like almost every word I say is scripted. And I'll tell you what I do is that years ago I got this conch shell. I can't remember where I was. I think I was um, somewhere in the Caribbean. And, you know, if you listen to a conch shell, you can hear the ocean. I believe the ocean speaks to me. Um, I'm a moon child. My birthday's June 29th. It has a lot to do with the tides and the moon cycles. And so the moon and the ocean has always spoken to me. And so what I do before every video is I sit and I just listen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are, are you sure? Okay. And then I just, I, I just repeat what the conch has told me. So really, I, I do script my videos, you guys. Like, I mean, blame it on the conch. But I totally script all of my videos 
they said I probably shouldn't have said blame it on the conch, but anyway, that's what I do. And I know it's really hard to believe. Um, a lot of people, when I tell them, I told some of my close friends and they're like, but how do you know that you're getting like the exact message across? I said, well, people seem to like it. So I don't know. It seems to be working for me. Um, so let's see what the next question is. The next question is, how many takes do you do when filming? Well, it's really, really hard, um, you know, with using this camera because what I have to do is like each shot is, in fact, I probably use about, oh, I don't know, a thousand of these cameras during each video because what I have to do is I have to hold it like this and go, so it's very slow. And then I have to, you know, cut out each picture, paste it together so that it comes across as a video. So if you count those as each, you know, uh, as how many, you know, takes that I do, probably something close to, I don't know, something like 165,000 or something. I mean, it doesn't, and it, you would think that it would take a lot longer for me to make a video, but it really doesn't. Uh, you know, 165, 180,000 takes, probably something like that. And then, you know, I glue them all together. And uh, I, th that's probably the longest part. You know, me and the dogs would get on the floor and I just glue them together. Sometimes they run through them, it drives me crazy, but it seems to work. So I don't know, 165, 100,000 or 185,000 takes, give a thousand or two. That's about how many takes it takes me. Um, if you use music in your videos, where do you find it? Well, I actually, um, you know, I do put subliminal messages in my videos. I do things like send Peter money, send Peter gifts. It's all in, you don't even know it because it's like in the background. You probably don't even hear the music, but the music is like, la da da, la da da, da da da. But it's like in the words, it's like, Send Peter money, send Peter money, send Peter books, send him lots of gifts. And you guys don't even know it's there. So that's the kind of music that I use. Um, I actually, I have a developer in Sweden that records those for me. And then he sends it to this guy in Spain. And this, the guy is a fantastic mixer. Um, and so then he does all the mixing and then they send it to me. And that music comes to me in about a week or two in advance. So I, I have all of that music prepared. Right now, I'm working actually on my Christmas tracks that because I have some Christmas gifts that I want this year. So those will go out and start being on my videos in about October. So that by October, you guys are getting the messages and then the gifts just start coming, that, you know, they start pouring in. Okay, the next question is, how do you make your thumbnails? Well, you guys, it's hard because I never know like what I want you guys to see before the video. Like I don't want you to be like, where you guys feel like you have like all the information and all that kind of stuff. So usually what I use is I use these old spin magazines. This one has Billy Idol on it. This one has Ozzy Osbourne on it. Let's see, this one, it doesn't, when does it say? Uh, June, it doesn't say what year. I don't even know what year this is. Um, old enough for them to have Marlboro uh, ads in the back. But anyway, sometimes I would use the Marlboro Man actually, you know, I mean, we all wanna look hot. But anyway, it just depends, like, you know, if, do I feel like Billy Idol today or do I feel like, you know, Ozzy Osbourne? Now, I will tell you that sometimes if those don't work, my go-to is always um, the Jackie Collins 29 to 1994, that was how long she was alive, her stamps that came out. I, I'll use those as like kind of a go-to thumbnail. So, you know if you see me like with a Jackie Collins, or Jackie Collins books, you know, Jackie Kennedy thumbnail, that it's probably a pretty serious video. Okay, the next thing is, let's see the next question. What do you use to edit your videos? Well, for me, a box of 120, you know, is colors is just perfect. I mean, I can get white in there on those pictures and I can like, you know, cut around the edges and that's why it seems to flow along so natural. Brick red's my favorite. Aqua, I like that too. Ocean blue. Um, I'm not a big favorite for yellows, but you know, all that, that's why it just, it seems to flow so natural, you guys. I, you have to go get one of these. The investment's about $4.99. I think it's a powerful investment for any YouTuber. Okay, the next question is, any tricks, tips, or hacks when it comes to filming or editing? I mean, you guys, I mean, most of these people out there that have like 150 to 200,000 subscribers on BookTube really don't know what they're doing. You know, I mean, I don't want to put them down or anything, but it's like, come on, you guys. I mean, nobody can really talk about a book when it's edited like this, you know? Who wants to watch that? I would prefer, I, I mean, really a tip that I would give is to sit there and when you're talking about a book, just talk about it like this. 
hold the camera like this so that people can only see your eyes, talk in one very monotone voice so that people just kind of get lulled into what you're saying. I mean, we don't want any of those whistles and exciting stuff. We don't want any personality. We just want deadpan. I mean, honestly, that's what I look for in a booktuber because then it makes me want to buy the book anymore. Okay, next question. In your opinion, what makes a good video from a production standpoint? Well, I think, you know, um, a good video. Let's see. What would be one of my favorite videos? I, I love all the old Murder, She Wrote. Um, heart to Heart, Love Boat. I love those are good videos. You can get them on video today. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, Ruthless People. I love that movie from back in the day. I think those are some good movies, you know. Um, I've heard the Disney ones are good. I haven't seen any of the Disney ones, but I heard they're pretty good videos. I don't know. Are there video stores around anymore? That's kind of a stupid question. I don't even know why it's on here. Anyway, that's the last question. So I guess with that, that concludes this part of my video. Did you guys like that? I thought that was real cute. Anyway, let's go back and I'm just going to answer these questions real quick because I wanted to do something kind of fun and kind of in the spirit of Peter Mon because you know I don't edit my videos. So anyway, but I know some people will be like, well, you didn't even answer the question, so can you help us please, seriously? So let me show you. Okay, a couple years ago, my husband and I bought cameras to do a photo shoot for fun. So this is, uh, the cam this is his actually, but this is the camera that I use. Can you see it? It's a Canon PowerShot SX40HS. It's not the greatest camera in the world. I think it was about 150 bucks back then, 200 maybe. I like it, we use it for everything. My husband uses it for going to music festivals and shooting video interviews with DJs and stuff. So it works really well for that. High quality pictures, I love it, it's a good investment. You should probably invest in a good camera if, you hang, if you're planning on being around on YouTube for a while. We used to use those ones that were like, you push a button and they're like Sony things. And the quality of the video really, really sucked. I do think it makes a difference, like I'll be honest with you. If I'm gonna watch YouTube videos, I wanna watch a video where it's actually kind of clear, you know, like, um, and I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, I don't have that kind of money. It's interesting because I think a lot of the phone capacity for videos is great today, depending on your phone, you know? But if you're really serious about doing booktube or buying or doing YouTube, you probably should invest in kind of a good, you know, camera. I mean, you wouldn't do another hobby like play tennis and not invest in a tennis racket. So it's kind of the same thing, right? Okay, do you use any additional equipment? Okay, you guys, I totally don't. Someday, when I get a little bit of money, if I'm still doing BookTube, what I'd love to do is have a room where I just do all my videos there and, you know, have nice lighting and things like that. Right now, I have the windows open in the background and I have the chandelier over me on. Not a fancy chandelier. But that's what I have and that's what I use. I know the videos don't come across, but I will tell you this and I'll explain all of this at the end of the video. So that's what I use. My camera is literally sitting right now on a, like a foot, what do you call it, a foot step for in the closet on top of a, like, a plastic desk that I got for, at Walmart for, like, $20, and I use it for, like, doing stuff on my computer outside. Um, let's see, scripted or spontaneous? Come on now. I mean, I may make lists of things that, like, books that I want to talk about, but I never script it. Okay, how many takes do you take when filming? Always just one, and then I edit the beginning and the end of it. I cut off the beginning because I don't want you guys to see me like reaching over, or I'll like hold the end and I'll be like, bye guys. Who wants to see me go, bye guys, and then turn it off? Nobody wants to see that. It looks like an idiot, and I've done that on a couple videos, and honestly, I don't really care. Um, so it takes me about one. Sometimes I'll do two if I get halfway through and I realize like, that I didn't say what I wanted to say, or I didn't have enough room on the computer, or something like that, or the, or the computer, on the camera, or the battery runs out, things like that. Um, if you use, I don't use music, um, because it's just, it's too confusing to me. Um, how do you make your thumbnails? If I wanna make one that looks a little bit nicer, I use PicMonkey, I don't love it, it slows up my computer, but it's free. And you can pay more to do, use other things, but who'd care, right? I don't think it makes a difference. I mean, I, I like nice thumbnails. When I see videos, it does draw me in to watch them more. But once I get there, if it's a boring video, sometimes I feel like these people have these incredible, you know, thumbnails, and then you get to it, and their video is, like, so bore-ass. I'm like, well, you make a good thumbnail, but what else? What do you use to edit your videos? You guys, I don't. I just, I've tried so many editing softwares. Don't mention it to me. It's confusing as hell to me. I get on, and I just do my thing, and then I clip off the end and the beginning. Any tips, tricks, or hacks when it comes to filming? I'll say that in a second. And in your opinion, what makes a good video from a production standpoint? I think a good video is what feels good to you. You know, if people were commenting on my videos and they were saying, I hate your videos, they're unedited, they're horrible, I would edit them. 
When I started watching videos years ago, I started watching Glozel Green. I loved her videos because they were totally unedited. So I just was like, I'm going to do what's me. And it has worked, you guys. I don't know why, but that's what I su would suggest. Be yourself. Make the video that feels natural to you. Get comfortable in your own skin. Be yourself and put something out there that you're proud of and that you love. I love my videos. I watch them back sometimes and laugh because I think I'm just... I'm funny, I guess, to myself. I'm an idiot, right? So anyway, get love you guys. I will talk to you later. I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye. I left that on there to see if you caught it.